Destination reached. Scylla. We have successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain, and we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself, or would you like to do the honors? Welcome back, Captain. Now that you have acquired a nav key to Stellar Bay, would you like me to contact Dr. Wells? I don't believe so, Captain. Transmission incoming. Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. <laughs> no, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Come see me in my lab. I'll answer any questions you have. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. Thinking of tinkering at the workbench? I used to love watching Alex work. Now I like watching you. Hibernation mask. Had to remove it, you know, in case you were prone to vomiting.
That's my communications terminal. If you stop in the engine room, would you ask Parvati to send Sam down to the bridge? I wonder about Mr. Hawthorne. What was he like? Why'd he make the computer a talkie? You think he got lonely, flying about on his own? Dust accumulation analysis. 2.5 years. Above Stellar Bay, Captain. No blockade is a match for my piloting skills.
Hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? I knew it. See, I made what you'd call a logical deduction. You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. Wish more folk could say that. Gets awful quiet guarding a landing pad that never gets used. You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off-world traffic. Us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing, so here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest Sal Tuna and Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Aww, won't be like that. I never get to do this part. Please. Swell, there's one for the logs. I'm even gonna give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls, mostly. Did he just say raptodons and cannibals? I can't wait. Oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Ah, the nostalgic stench of home. Can't say I miss the day-to-day -day of living in Edgewater. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Mr. Sandra, I'll be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tosswell poster coming in on the next sublight shipment, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? I couldn't really say I'm just a fan of the game. But the fancy collector types say the more people see these things, the less valuable they are. And I figure my poster's been passed around by more than a few people by now. Thanks a bunch! Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. We're here, light years from Earth, going about our lives. Every time the punch clock feels, a worker earns his meals. What are you talking about? Sorry, I thought you were quoting me.
Someone's been killed! I think I'm gonna be sick. No! I just stepped in a dead man's blood. And I think one of the flies landed on my mouth. If you're going into the apartments, do not go into the lower one on the right. That's where the body is. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go contemplate a hot shower. The body's in the first apartment on the right. So much blood. for clues? What a gruesome way to die. Got any news from the rest of Halcyon?
you're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial Age Mammoths. Aren't they just? When I get to worrying about the marauders outside, the raptodons chewing at the walls, I just turn my transceiver up to drown it all out. Most of the time it's static on account of the frequency being clogged up, but sometimes it's toss ball. You get to listen to games all day? Stellar Bay really is a paradise. It's pretty swell, but it's a whole lot better with company. Say, I don't think I've seen you before, and I'd remember that face. I'll try not to be a stranger then. Name's Felix, by the way. You should stop by more often. The games are always better when you've got someone to celebrate with. Sounds like a good time. I wouldn't mind bringing a couple drinks and settling in for the pennant match. Look at me, getting carried away again. So, what can I do for you? Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. Right, so the thing with Isaac is he didn't know where to stop. He'd get stuck on something, and he just couldn't let it go. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader, other times he'd keep betting on a losing team, started owing the wrong people money. I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club. They're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do. Val must seem out of sorts to you. She's always cranky. No, I mean, more than usual. Wouldn't know. I made it a point to stay out of her way. I wonder sometimes what they're doing on other colonies. Uh-huh. Think they're watching the same serials, following the same toss ball games? Mm-hmm. You're not listening to a word, are you? Look, my back aches and everything smells like fish. I just want to enjoy my beer. Wrapped musk and canid eyes, right here. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Oh, good. Celia hasn't come by in a few days, so I haven't sold much.
you look like a man who's looking for some most, I don't know, Celia usually buys whatever I have, and Mr. Pickett seemed real interested. So I thought maybe I was onto something. She works for Sanjar at MSI. She's also Stellar Bay's biggest collector of Canid incisors. And I should know, because she buys them from me. He came to Stellar Bay years ago, just before the board cut us off. Ended up stuck here. He was always real interested in our monsters. Manta Queens, especially. Sure, they're real big. Hard to miss them. Who wouldn't be? Now that just sounds like a fancy way to say boring people. Well, I could send you to the same place I sent Mr. Pickett. But I haven't seen him in a few weeks. To tell true, I'm starting to get a bit worried about him. Tell you what. I'll tell you where I sent Mr. Pickett if you promise to look for him. Help him out if he's got himself in trouble. Fair deal? All right then. Leave town through the southern gate. The one right here. And head past the abandoned ruins. Last mana queen I saw was in the wilds out that -a -ways. Could be Mr. Pickett still out there too. Thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. Don't you tell me to calm down. I promised my boy I'd protect him for always. But how can I keep him safe if he's run away? He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Please, won't you go and find my boy? He's been pining for an adventure, says he's tired of living cooped up behind the walls. But he doesn't understand how dangerous it is out there. I warned him, a raptodon would snap him up first chance it got. I just know one's ripped his arm off and is gnawing on his sweet little fingers. He should have listened to his mama. I promised I'd keep him safe here with me. Well, I, I, I guess I can't ask you to leave the town walls for free. It is deathly dangerous out there. I've got some bits saved up for a rainy day. I'll give you every last one if you just break. He's been listening to those awful broadcasts that the iconoclasts put out. I begged Sanjar to put a stop to them, but did he? No! And now I just know my boys run off to Amber Heights. That is, if a Manta Queen hasn't spooled out and eaten his entrails for breakfast already! Those low-life degenerates, leading innocent boys into a life of danger. Oh, they make it sound so exciting. Like it's noble to risk it all out there, fighting for the greater good. Not sure I'm seeing the problem here. You're one of them, aren't you? You should be ashamed of yourself, young man. Just as your mama would be. How noble is it to worry your loved ones? Not at all, I say. But still they preach their sermons of anarchy and rebellion to anyone who listened. If they weren't holed up in Amber Heights, I'd knock them all upside the head. That old settlement, southwest of Stellar Bay. I don't know which is worse, the thought of my son shacking up with the nutty iconoclasts. Or that he never made it. Sprats could be nesting in his rotting body alongside the road as we speak. Or, or maybe Marauders got him. Well, thank you. 
Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. And if you find any of them iconoclast indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouth. Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. Who the fuck are you? This ain't your alley. Huh? Hmm? Beat it. Hey! What are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. Fuck are you? This ain't your alley. Are you this ain't your alley hey i you. saw that what do you think you're doing don't let me catch you at it again
How does it feel? How does what feel? Serving an instrument of corporate supremacy? Let me hazard a guess. You're talking about the church. Isn't it true the OSI is just a cog in the machine of oppression? I'm glad you're asking questions, Felix. Curiosity is the foundation of the scientician faith. Don't try and convert me, preacher. Get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest Saltuna and Halcyon. What can I do for you today? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Well... New business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Did you hear that power play, Celia? They don't make them like this anymore in Halcyon. I only hope you don't judge me by my handshake. Now, what business brings you here? Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Because he's scared to go it alone. You need the board to hold your hand and tell you everything's gonna be okay. Ain't that right? Surviving alone isn't as easy as it looks. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. now we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. You talk like Graham. Can't imagine why you'd sneer at the notion of a free colony. Could it be because you're an agent of the establishment? I used to be young and idealistic too, but you can't run a city on high-minded ideals. Exactly. Intellectualism fuels the train to mankind's future, but the tracks the train runs on are forged from practicality. Sounds like something out of the chairman's own notes, Vic. Yes. It's as though the good vicar has plucked the very words from my brain.
Well, Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. Are you out of your mind? You can't just go crawling back to your old masters. Well, we can't continue to subsist like this either. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. I was starting to get bored listening to you, until you said the phrase, extremely powerful ordinance. It is quite the rush. I'll need to gather some supplemental materials, but I mustn't get ahead of myself. You do tend to do that. The Bolt 52 will be in the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Saying what which way? That's just what it's called. It's supposed to stand for something, but I forget what. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? But that's terrible. What happened? But that means we won't be able to log their testimonies. If there's one thing I've been hoping to re-establish in Stellar Bay, it's proper documentation for legal matters. Celia, I do hope you're taking notes. I've got to remember some of these quips. Indeed, sir. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. You see what I have to deal with? For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. But back then, it was known as Terra 1.
As you may have noticed, this planet has more than its share of hazards. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. That's also what I thought. Ah, oh, we were young and bold then. Not unlike yourself. And how did that work out? That's yet to be determined. We saw the chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. Hmm? Oh, well, there were surely other junior executives with more open minds, though none of them had the temperament to handle the paperwork. But I was keeping my tone flat and maintaining eye contact. You weren't supposed to notice I was avoiding the subject. This is why you've never been good with presentations, sir. <sighs> Very well. Many, many years ago, Graham Bryant and I used to be collaborators of sorts. Indeed, for all the good it did. MSI's then leadership wasn't enthusiastic. They insisted we be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Many of us chose to stay behind, and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms, as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't think I realized how far they'd stoop. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. Your first mistake was expecting the board to cut you a fair deal. I understand the sentiment, but if we can't rely on some sort of framework, then what do we have? I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. A necessary evil for the greater good of society. That's exactly how the board describes it. Monarch may be dangerous, but it's hardly the wasteland the board describes it to be. Whatever the board's goals, the greater good has little part in them. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, and once you go back to them, they'll own your dignity too. Without the board, chaos would overtake the system. Working within the established order isn't a principle to snub one's nose at, Captain. 
To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community. And being cut off means slow strangulation. Hmm? I fear the MSI citizens who've been dissolved into Raptodon Cud would disagree with you. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Oh, believe me, I've learned that much. But I'm also not going to leave MSI at a disadvantage. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. As far as I'm concerned, the less said about Graham, the better. Graham seemed like a reasonable man years ago. and We both agreed that MSI's treatment of its workers was untenable. I thought reforms would be enough. I didn't realize you wanted to abolish the corporate system entirely. What can I do for you?
You ever think about what... ...goes on in a marauder's head? No, they're crazy. But they still manage to keep themselves, dress themselves, work together. Gotta be something of that. All I need to know is that they're on the other side of that wall. I'm sure some... It smells like rat in here. Oh, it does work! I bought some musk from Sebastian to cover up the saltina smell. Trust me, this is worse. You know what your problem is, Vic? Other than being called Vic? You scientists got no imagination. That's your problem. I've imagined you being quiet. It was a nice daydream. Everything always goes according to plan, right? Ain't that what scripture tells you? Scripture also tells us to exercise patience in the presence of the young and the foolish. But I repeat myself. It's slippery, right? On account of its blood, so it's it's sliding all over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the tell the blood from the mud. But I gotta get in there, get right in that baby wrap stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every dam wrapped out there. Right. What are you staring? Wait. You ain't from around here. Who are you? Name's Nioka. I'm the best big game hunter on the planet. You're also the loudest big game hunter on the planet. And the drunkest. Shut the fuck. Fair point. I deserve it, though. On account of being the best. You're a hunter? You ever killed a rapt with your bare hands? And what stories they are. Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Outstand! What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger?
It is a shithole. It's a free shithole, though. Plenty of ways to blaze your own trail. Folks seem to like that. It is an admirable endeavor, if misguided, and nearly impossible to achieve. I ain't saying it's easy, but look around you. If it's impossible, it seems nobody's gone and told the people living here. Besides, the booze is good. Something about that fish oil. Cheers! Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass... wait, wait that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's... let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month, on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? <laughs> 